Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. So you guys know that I have that Dell T7910 workstation machine from several videos from last year. I've decided to give that machine to my wife. She's been doing a lot of um, accounting related work and large spreadsheets and that kind of stuff. And so she really needs a more powerful computer. And so I'm going to be setting that up for her use. So in place of that, I've decided to get myself a HP Z840 workstation. So this here is my Z840. And you guys know my son has a Z800. I've also put together some Z820s for my friends, but I've never actually owned a Z8 series uh, HP workstation myself. And so I decided to get this Z840 for myself. And this will be my primary uh, editing workstation and all, you know, basically my, my main desktop machine. Now, as I was looking over this machine, I came to a realization that this actually makes for a wonderful first server. Now, one of the things I do a lot, I spend a lot of my day doing is actually answering a lot of questions from people on eBay, through the social media outlets, in email. I get a lot of people asking me, hey, I'm about to build my first server. Uh, is it you know, good for me to use this or that? Should I turn my gaming PC into a server? Should I go buy a, a whole rack setup and buy some rack mount servers like I often show in my videos? And you know, everybody's situation is a little bit unique and different, but I really think that if this is the first time you're getting or thinking about setting up a server for your home, this makes for a wonderful platform to do that. And one of the things is that you know, not a lot of people have a server rack in their home. And so, yes, you know, it's exciting and fun to go set up a server room in your house and install a bunch of rack mount servers and with some enterprise gear. And that's all great, but it, it's a pretty big investment and uh, not just in the cost of materials, but also the time in setting up a, a room properly, you know, cooled and, uh, you know, with the, all the rack equipment and all that stuff. And so, that can be a little bit daunting for some people. And some people have, you know, they might live in an apartment and or some other place where they don't have the room to install a server rack. And so if you don't have a server rack, but you're thinking about putting together a server in your home, this platform is really a great combination of all that stuff. Because for, for one, it's a desktop platform. So you basically can treat it like any desktop PC. It's a little bit bigger and this particular one is actually really heavy. I think it weighs like 50 pounds, but it's a very nice design. And so it's really kind of an oversized desktop PC really. And so if you already have a computer in your home, you know where to put this, right? Like you don't have to find a dedicated closet, a server rack or anything like that. You can basically put this, you know, somewhere that's accessible, but you know, you don't have to find a special place for it. But on the other hand, the internals of a machine like this is full of enterprise grade gear, right? Xeon processors, lots of memory banks, lots of PCIe lanes, and, and potentially lots of storage uh, capacity. So anyway, as I was looking at this Z840, I just kept thinking about all the questions I've been answering over the years, helping other people set up their first servers. And I thought, you know what? I really want to kind of showcase this machine and let you guys know that you know, if you are building your first server or maybe a second server or fourth server, whatever it is, and you really don't want to go with a rack mount solution, you know, you're kind of, you have a little computer lab at home or whatever, and you would prefer a desktop format. This makes for a wonderful machine to do that. And on the flip side, if you ever graduate from uh, just having desktop uh, style PCs and you do want to migrate to a entire server rack, this actually has an option to convert this into a rack mount machine. And so that's, again, another reason why I think this is a great starter. It also allows you to transition from a kind of desktop PC format uh, setup to a rack mount setup as well. All right, let's get into the inside of this machine and I'll show you all the advantages that this has as a server machine. So one of the things I really like about these workstation machines is that mechanical engineering is absolutely superb. So just as you saw, opening the side panel was very, very simple. It's a very solid mechanical action here with this lever here. All right, so as you can see here, this is the inside of 
the HP Z840. And this is a very similar to the Z820. It's actually almost identical to the Z820. It's also very, very similar to the Z800 that you guys have seen in the past. All right, so this chassis has a three uh, airflow zone design. There's the top zone, which brings in air to cool just the power supply. There is a second central zone that cools uh, primarily the processors and memory. And then there's a third zone that cools the hard drives and any PCI cards that are behind this cover here. Okay, so one of the things that I think is great about this uh, workstation machine uh, for a server application are the uh, hot swap bays. So there are four hard drive hot swap bays. This one has a two and a half inch adapter in it, but these are primarily meant for three and a half inch drives. So if you are building a Plex server and you're storing a lot of media, there's plenty of room for you to put in some very large capacity SAS or SATA hard drives to store your large media content. Now, there are four bays here. These are all connected to a onboard LSI uh, SAS controller that can be converted to IT mode for those of you who want to use ZFS or Unraid. But in addition to the three bays, we have two five and a quarter inch bays, and you can add one of those mobile rack uh, trayless adapters that will allow you to install three more three and a uh, half inch drives as well. So you can have a total of seven three and a half inch drive bays. And so that is quite a bit of storage, especially now that we have uh, 16 and 14 terabyte hard drives, there is going to be plenty of space for you to store a lot of large media. But there's actually further expansion that we'll get to in a little bit here as we open this up. All right, so to open this machine up, first we open this cover. And again, the mechanical design in these systems are superb. There's uh, almost, almost everything you need to do in this, uh, it can be done completely toolless. And so I've opened up the cover to the PCI slot. I don't have a lot in this machine right now. This machine is uh, still in the process of being set up. I will be making a series of videos showing how I set up this machine for my workstation uh, uses. But anyway, I just wanna show you guys what we have in here. So in this machine, there is, I believe it's this chip, if I'm not mistaken, is an LSI SAS 2308 chipset. And so as you guys know, that is a SAS 2, six gigabit, uh, SAS controller. It will accept SATA drives. All SAS controllers can work with SATA drives. And it actually uses, instead of normal SAS connections, it uses these eight uh, SATA connectors. And you can see that the first four here are labeled uh, bays 0, 1, 2, and 3. And these basically connect to the four bays here. And like I said, you can add three more bays to the two uh, five and a quarter inch uh, bays here and simply connect them to the uh, remaining um, uh, SATA ports here that are part of that SAS controller. And so you can expand to seven. Now you can actually expand further outside the chassis. This, this machine is designed to accommodate an external SAS port right over here. And so you can connect that to these four ports as well for a JBOD uh, extension. So basically you can run an external SAS cable and through this hole and connect to a JBOD chassis. And in that case, you probably want to convert this into a rack mount configuration, which is um, an option as well. So that's one of the primary adv advantages of this type of a machine is that you get hot swap bays. Okay, these are hot swappable bays with uh, removable trays. And you can get a lot of them for your uh, large media file storage, right? That's one of the things that a lot of people uh, set up a home server for is to, is to run a Plex server to store your um, multimedia uh, files and stuff like that. Okay, so let me pull this massive uh, fan shroud here. This is a wonder of engineering. Um, I call this the, the chamber of air coercion because uh, basically, you know, instead of just allowing air to flow from, uh, from front to rear, this basically forces the air into all the various places. And it's kind of a brute force design, but it works well. Okay, so here we see the um, main motherboard and we have two sockets. So you have plenty of CPU uh, compute power in this. And you can start out with one processor. And as your, your home lab is growing and your 
perhaps uh, setting this up as a virtual machine and you're running uh, various virtual machines, as you need more compute power, you can always expand with a second processor. And in addition to that, there's very high uh, memory capacity in these. You'll see that there are eight DIMMs per socket. There's a total of 16 DIMMs and you can use some very high capacity DIMMs for a lot of memory. So if you are planning to set up a virtual uh, machine hypervisor, this is also a great platform for that. But more importantly, not only do you get a lot of compute power and memory capacity out of this, but remember in this generation, in a lot of modern compute platforms, the PCIe lanes are attached to the processors. And so in a way, that's been one of the most limiting uh, resources uh, of most computers. So one of the most frequent questions I get from people who are setting up their own uh, server for the first time is that they're telling me, oh, I'm using my gaming PC and I've only got one by 16 uh, PCIe slot for the GPU and I have another by one or by four uh, PCI slots. So a lot of gaming computers, and this is the reason why I really don't recommend people uh, use their gaming computers for a server setup is that the resources are just very, very limited. And you'll usually find yourself, if you get into this hobby or you, you find uh, setting up a home server to be really useful, over time you'll quickly kind of realize that your gaming PC's motherboard is really not set up uh, well for a server configuration. You'll run out of PCI lanes quicker than you would expect. So one of the things that is wonderful about these uh, workstation platforms is that because it has dual sockets, there are a lot of PCIe lanes. And so if you look over here, there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven PCIe slots. And at least three of them are by 16. And so that's great, not just to install a graphics card for use as a workstation, but a lot of times people are installing graphics cards to accelerate their Plex transcoding, right? And so you have plenty of room for this. Not, in fact, this is actually uh, a really good balance because a lot of server platforms, for example, are not designed to accommodate for GPUs. And so it's a little bit hard sometimes to install a graphics card in a server platform. And, but because this is a workstation that uses server components in a desktop format, this does have plenty of by 16 PCIe slots making it extremely easy for you to add uh, several uh, graphics processors um, if you need them. And you also have these other uh, PCIe uh, slots that would be great for adding additional storage or any other uh, type of uh, peripherals you want, might want to add to this machine. Now, in particular for the Z840, uh, and this doesn't apply to the Z820, but for the Z840, this platform does support PCIe uh, port bifurcation. And because of that, these by 16 slots can actually accommodate uh, a, one of those cards that has uh, four M.2 NVMe SSDs, uh, allowing you to add extremely, extremely fast storage to your system in addition to the bulk storage that you have in the drive base. So that's also another advantage of having the by 16 slot and in particular having the port uh, PCIe uh, bifurcation feature in this platform. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the power supply. And so this is both a pro and a con, but basically these machines are designed to be very easily maintainable. And so this up here, this kind of very funky long shape is the power supply. And you remove it by pulling up on this lever and pulling it out and the entire power supply comes right out. So this makes it very easy for you to replace a power supply should it fail. You basically just order another one, pull this out, plop it back in. In a normal desktop PC case, and depending on the, the type of uh, PSU or power supply you have, you might have to unplug a whole bunch of cables. Uh, sometimes depending on the case configuration, you might actually have to remove a bunch of components in order to get to the power supply and remove the power supply to replace it. So this has the advantage of having a easily swappable power supply. And that's one of the things that I really love about server platforms. In a server platform, you actually have one additional advantage other than having a very easily um, swappable power supply, they're usually also hot swappable and, and dual and re, uh, redundant. So you have two power supplies 
and you can you can if one fails you can pull it out while the system is still running and just replace it and everything's good to go you don't have the dual redundancy here because this is a desktop configuration but you do have an easily uh, swappable power supply now on the other hand one of the the kind of drawbacks of this is that this doesn't obviously accept a standard atx power supply and so these power supplies sometimes can be rather expensive because they're kind of exclusive to this machine instead of being a standard power supply. So that's kind of a pro and a con, but uh, overall, uh, since these machines are getting a little bit older now, the components, uh, the price on the components are actually coming down. And so it's not necessarily a, um, a huge expense to get a new power supply. All right, and one other thing I want to point out here is these uh, SATA power plugs. So these SATA power plugs are uh, meant for powering any devices that you put in these uh, five and a quarter inch bays. And you'll notice something kind of unique here. You'll, you'll notice that it's missing a wire, right? So that is the 3.3 volt wire that's missing from these plugs. And so if you guys have been uh, shucking those drives from Best Buy or buying any other kind of modern uh, SATA 3.2 drives that have power disable feature, you know that sometimes when you plug the power into those drives, if your power supply supplies 3.3 volts, it immediately shuts down that drive and won't allow it to power on. Okay, this is one of the problems I have a lot of customers uh, contact me about. They're setting up their server for the first time and they're plugging in their hard drives and they're saying, hey, none of my hard drives are showing up. And of course, you know, they bought a IT mode HBA from me, so they're kind of wondering, did I send them a bum HBA or not? And after some troubleshooting, usually we come to the conclusion that it's because their power supply was supplying 3.3 volts to a power disable uh, feature of the hard drives and not allowing the hard drives to power up. So if you're using some of the modern hard drives that have the power disable, you don't have to tape those 3.3 volt pins in order for it to work. These SATA power connectors will work just fine, as well as the backplane power uh, in these four drive bays. So that is again, another advantage of using a, a workstation class machine as a server. It basically adds the convenience that you don't have to worry about those type of little uh, gotchas. All right guys, that's pretty much it. Those are the reasons why I think this Z840 makes for a great server platform for the home. I hope uh, some of those reasons have given you some food for thought. And if you are planning to get a new machine to set up a home server, I hope you'll consider the HP Z840 uh, as a candidate for your new server build. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you like this video, make sure to give me that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support my channel, check out my eBay store. I've got all sorts of server uh, and computer goodies. I'll leave a link down in the video description, so uh, please go check that out. All right, guys, thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye-bye.